Lori, and I work at the Galloway Branch of the Atlantic County Library System. And one of my coworkers there just loves to eat French yogurt. And they come in these really cute little jars. And she said to me one day, can you think of a way that we can reuse these jars? So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to explore some different ways to reuse not just small jars that you might get with yogurt in them, but you can really use any of these ideas with any jars that you might have on hand. And today I brought just a few ideas that you can do fairly quickly at home with household items. Starting out with this nice sparkly one, we have made this with just one cup of Epsom salts and one drop of food dye. One thing to keep in mind when you're making these, these are really pretty if you want to use them on a centerpiece for a special event like a wedding or something like that, is you might want to do them just a few days before the event because the air will impact the salts and eventually that will not look as pretty as it does now. You could also use it as a small planter as I have here in the back, decorated with just a little ribbon around it. Just remember if you're using it as a planter that you want to put some stones in the bottom of the jar to provide drainage for the soil. We also have on the corner over here, turn that just a bit for you to see. Again, we put a candle in that, but that's a transfer similar to what you'll see down here using simple packing tape and a page from either a brochure or a magazine, an image that you enjoy, that I'll show you today how you can attach that, soak it, and then end up with a finished product that looks a little bit like an impressionistic painting. In this corner, I just tied a ribbon around it, put in some Q-tips, and you can do that, several of them, in your bathroom that you can use for cotton balls, cotton swabs, or anything that you use on a daily basis, but it looks a little bit more pretty than just using the box. Over here, I've simply put a tea light nestled down into some black beans. You can also use coffee beans. You can use stones. You can use anything in your base. You want to make sure that you put something underneath of your tea light or the tea light will just slide around. As an example, for our Epsom salt lumina luminary, excuse me, I mixed some of the blue Epsom salts with some white sand and placed that as a base inside of that. And back here, I just put some sea glass inside one of the jars. It looks really lovely if you put it in front of a sunny window as the sun reflects off the colors in the jar. So today, as a starting point, we're going to learn how to make these really neat image transfers that are a little bit more stable and secure than just working with a piece of paper. I decided to stay with my theme here of lighthouses and I did pull this page out and I've already taped it just in the interest of time, but what I'm using is packing tape. And I found that rather than one of these handy dispensers, it's actually easier just to use a roll and use scissors if you want to get a nice clean line. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to tape the image that you'd like to use and then cut it out. Now I use just one width of tape for the lighthouse that I made, but I put some rocks in the bottom. I thought it worked well with the lighthouse and you can see on this that there are some rocks in the bottom and it lifts it up because the tape is just not quite as high as our jar is. But you can always tape two strips of tape to your page and cut that out and cut it down to size if you want to fill the, fill the entire jar area. So once you've cut this out, you're going to take it and you're going to put it in some water. And make sure that you put the paper side down, not the tape side down. You're going to do that for about five minutes. Now while that soaks, we're going to make a macrame hanger using really simple, not very fancy knots that just about anyone would know how to make in advance, but I do encourage you, if you enjoy the process, do a little research. There are some really pretty macrame knots out there that you can use to, to dress up your finished product a little bit. Now, I first started with a heavier macrame cord such as this, which was really lovely, but I found that it overpowered the delicate 
little jars that I was working with and tended to cover up the image that I wanted to have displayed. So I decided to work with some twine, which most everyone has just laying around the house or in the garage somewhere. So you can give this a try without running out and buying lots of expensive supplies. Now I cut four pieces of twine into 72 inch lengths. So that's uh, two yardsticks. If you don't have a tape measure, you can use that as well. And you're going to fold them in half, as I've done here, and then take the very top of it and just tie a knot at the top, leaving room to have a loop to be able to hang it on something. So if at first it doesn't work so well, you can try it again. Give yourself plenty of room and then you can adjust the location of the knot upward if that's easier. And I do recommend as you're working on this, once you have your initial loop done, hanging it on something that will allow you to work with it hanging down. It's a lot easier than trying to do it just laying on the table. Now I came down approximately seven inches to make the one that we show hanging over here. So it doesn't have to be an exact science. You can just sort of eyeball it and decide the way you'd like it to look. Or you can, if you want to be a bit more precise, use a ruler to do that. So if I'm hanging it about seven inches would bring us just about to here. So you'll take two of the strands and just do a simple knot. And you'll repeat that with the remaining strands. Again, you'll be taking two of the strands. Try to get them as close in length where the knot is as the first one. And I would suggest not doing them very tight when you're first attempting your knot because that way if you need to adjust it, it's a little bit easier. You can always pull them tight after you have them in about the same location. And then you're going to continue doing this same idea for three additional rows. I spaced mine about two inches apart, which seemed to work really well for the size of the yogurt jars. And in this case, it's a little bit longer, so all you need to do is loosen it up a little bit, pull the knot up some, and get it as close as possible to the others. So for your next row, you're going to take one from each of two knots that are next to each other, put them together, again come down about two inches, and do another knot. And continue to do this with the remaining twine. And you'll start to see the little pocket that you'll be sitting the jar in take, take shape. And this can be a relaxing activity to do while sitting in front of the TV or maybe even sitting with friends because it doesn't take a whole lot of concentration unless you're really a perfectionist in trying to make sure that all of your knots are exactly the right distance from the previous one. So as you're continuing down, you'll do one more row so that you have a total of three rows. And then when you get to the very bottom of it, you're just going to take it all together, bring it around, similar to what you did in the top.
knotted at the bottom. That is where your jar will sit. And then trim it down however far you would like to have that. If you'd like to have more hanging at the bottom, you won't trim off as much as I did for the one that we're showing over here. All right, now we're gonna take a look and see how our little strip from the magazine is doing. You take it out. When I first did this, I thought that's sure to ruin the image. But fortunately it did not, and it came out pretty easily. Sometimes you do need to work a little bit to make sure that you get all of the paper and all of the adhesive off the back. So you're just going to peel this off of the back. It may come off in a nice neat strand and then you just need to go back and work it with your fingers to get all of the adhesive and all of the paper out. It takes just a few minutes to do that. But once you've completed that, it comes out semi-transparent. You lose a little of the detail, but that actually gives it some artistic value. It's almost like an impressionistic painting. So we'll finish this up. You can certainly use some Mod Podge and attach this to the outside of the jar. But what I decided to do, because I got to thinking if we're using magazines, they're often seasonal. So they have different images that you might want to use at different times of the year. So I thought that if we simply loop it around and put it on the inside, it would be very easy to exchange them out and have a different look without removing a lot of adhesive and starting from scratch, cleaning the jar. So you'll just put that in, but because again, these little penguins probably would like to be on some rocks and we need to lift this paper up just a little bit to size, we'll put in some rocks. Curl this around. Once it's inside, you might need to cut it down to size. This one looks a little bit big, so we'll cut a little bit off. Cut it down to size, curl it around. We'll put our little penguins inside of here. And you can tie a ribbon on it, similar to what I've done here with this lighthouse. Let me pull that down to give you another idea. And then you can put a candle in it. Please do remember that if you're using any type of candle to use it, one that is battery operated, if you're planning to hang it in one of these so that you don't start a fire, but you could also put a plant in it and do a number of hanging plants with that. We will have a limited number of grab and go craft kits available at the Galloway branch of the library, and it will include an instruction sheet for all of the different ideas that we've provided you with today. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.